Hello everyone, in this video we will talk about what is the future of React or should you do React in 2023. So let's get started. Okay, so should we do React in 2023? So React is, I think, the most popular framework uh, in the front end right now. Before that, I think it was jQuery that was that much popular. In Poblat, like everyone was doing jQuery back then. Uh, I think there are more people that were doing jQuery than now people did React. The reason being there are so many different frameworks. So if you're starting, then you're pretty confused like, should I do this framework or should I go with the new ones like Swelled? So I think I'll divide this video in two half. So first half, so first half is for someone who is just looking for a job right now. Like they're looking for a job right now in the next six months. So that's the first part, the first half of the video I'll talk about. And the second is you have, let's say a year or two year, like let's, maybe you're in college or maybe you're in university and you are not going to do a job right away or you're not trying to find a job next year or so. So I'll, I have different opinion if you are not applying for a job actively. So let's, let's talk about the, the first case when you're actively applying jobs. So if you're applying jobs and you're looking for a front end position, then I would highly recommend starting with React. The reason being React is, is kind of mature. Uh, and I think there are more jobs in React than in any other framework. So if you do React, then you will have more interview calls as simple as that. And I'm not bashing against the other frameworks. They are fine as well. But if you are serious to become a front-end developer, picking React is actually, I think, more beneficial because at least you'll be getting interview calls, right? So you can give interviews and test your ability. I mean, if you are good enough, they'll hire you. If you're not, then you can just practice more and give another interview in after some time and then you'll get a job. So you should get a job. Yeah, it depends on uh, various things. So let's say you are a junior developer and you want to build some projects. Now, because you don't have full grasp of the language, you need to Google a lot of things. And the good thing about building a project in React is you can find most of your answer in different blog posts or medium posts. Like lots of people have put their solution so you can, you can see how they implemented something. But in, in case of like other newer frameworks, maybe like Swelled, you will not have that flexibility. Maybe you're looking for uh, doing some basic things. I think you can find some basic things in Swelled as well as React. But if you try to build something complex, then I think you will hit a wall after some time. So if you are a junior developer, you should start with React. I think React has pretty decent ecosystem, has pretty good uh, stack overflow question and answer so you can go to Stack Overflow and you can use ChatGPT as well. I think they have, uh, because it was updated in 2021, so they have a lot of React knowledge as well. So you can try ChatGPT or you can try Stack Overflow or there are so many blogs uh, you can you can, you can can try. And on top of that, let's say you're building a data visualization application. Maybe like there's some data you need to you need to uh, process and then you need to create some kind of graph. So there will be tons of libraries available uh, on NPM. You can install those libraries and create your graphs uh, or upload your data, whatever you want to do with it. But if you compare libraries available for React with other frameworks, then you will not have that much freedom in those frameworks. Maybe because maybe no one has written those library in the world. I'm just comparing like a new framework Svelte with React. So I'm not against Svelte on uh, the new framework. So that I, I want to uh, clear those things. All right. So these are the things like it's a mature language. Sorry, it's a mature framework. It has good ecosystem, good support system, good libraries. So these four things are in favor of choosing React. But now let's talk about some of the cons, some of the negative aspect of uh, starting with React. One of the things I find confusing with React is because previously like we were using class-based components 
And then after React 16, we are now using more functional based components. We have more hooks nowadays and nobody's using class based components now. I mean, if you have an older code base, then you probably have to use it. But at some time, React is going to deprecate class based components. I don't know when they'll do it, but I think they'll do it. So if you are learning React, then maybe you're finding your uh, solution in Stack Overflow. And if you see the timeline, maybe they, someone has posted that question uh, five years ago, and then their solution will be based on class-based components. So the may, so now you'll be having those issues. I think this issue is persistent with other frameworks like Vue. I think Vue 2 was more like class-based components, and now everyone is, is doing more like functional based components. So Vue is, I think Vue 3 is more functional based than class based components. So you will have that issue. But as compared to, let's say, Angular, I think after Angular 2, there is from, I don't know what current version they're using, I think, and uh, Angular 10 they're using. So if you compare Angular with React, you will find that the answers make more sense in the case of Angular than in React, because React now we have hooks but in angular they don't they didn't change their framework dramatically so that one of the issues i found with the react nowadays uh especially if you're a beginner and this is one of the most common question like should i start with classless component or functional components so to be honest i think you should not start with classless components the reason i already explained the newer code bases are written in functional components so make sure you start with that and i think the react's new our documentation will only cover uh, functional components. So there's no point doing class-based components now. But let's say you go to join a company and they have this class-based components uh, architecture in their code base, then you need to learn that. As simple as that. But the good thing is you get the job, right? So if you have a job, then I don't mind spending some time and learning those uh, class-based components way of doing React. But most probably, you will be using functional based components. And one of the other issues I found with React is because I worked in different React code bases. So maybe a, a, a company or a project is uh, is being running on uh, the Create React app, uh, but maybe the other company is using Next.js or maybe they're using Remix nowadays. So you will have many different ways of doing one thing in react or maybe someone using redux or maybe someone's using the other state management library in react so because the fundamental of react was like it was basically a library it was not supposed to be a framework and they still say it's not a framework it's a library but developers treating react as framework and that's what uh, I think making a lot of confusion, especially if you are a junior and you're going from code base to code base, you need to learn the way they are implementing uh, to make changes in the code base. So what do what do I mean by here is, so you need to teach yourself new ways of doing the same thing in React in many different ways. Maybe you are using Redux, or maybe some other team is using the new context API, or maybe someone's using Next.js, or maybe someone's using Remix. So they are, they are all using React, but they are using React in all different ways. Yes, fundamentally, they will be doing the way React want them to do, but React is not very much opinionated. So what happens if the framework is not opinionated is uh, it creates confusion among developers. So my advice is try to learn at least one state management library like Redux. Uh, I think now they have like Mobax. I don't know. I'm not too aware of those new libraries. I worked in uh, Redux and I worked in the Context API. So I don't have much experience explaining the other state management, but at least get experience in one so that you have some context like how to do things in React. All right, so now move to the next category. You're not looking for a job. Maybe you have some time. Maybe you're looking for a job next year, or maybe you have, you're in the middle of your university. So you still have few years left. So what should you do? Um, 
I think if you have some time, then I think you should not start with React. I'm I'm still not confident enough to suggest someone that not to start with React because React has so many opportunities. If you do React, you will have so many opportunities. But I think in the future we will have really good technologies coming in, especially uh, framework like. Svelte, even Vue, uh, they are getting better and better. And the the thing, the reason most devs start with React is not that React is easy or it has better tooling. I think React has React native attached with it. So let's say you're a team and you're building uh, a web application and a mobile application. Then you can do everything with React ecosystem. So that is, I think, React superpower. And not many people talk about this. That's, I think, for me, I think that's the number one reason uh, why we have React domination across front end. But I think in the future where a team doesn't need to have React Native, uh, they don't need to use React Native, they might ditch React with frameworks like Svelte or Quick uh, or the new frameworks coming in. Uh, the reason is, I think sometimes it's good to have an opinionated framework. Because see, those frameworks where they tell you how to do things may look scarier in the beginning, uh, but in the long run, that will help developers to build things quickly. Say with Angular, the learning curve of Angular is pretty steep as compared to React. You can get started with React fairly quickly, but as compared to Angular where you, you have so many moving parts. But once you understand Angular, I think all the Angular code bases looks exactly similar. And I think that's why Angular doesn't have that much popularity because you can't change things. And uh, developers, they, they, don't, they, they don't want rigidity. So they don't, they, they, what they want is they want to tweak things. They want to uh, make things perfect according to them. So we have different opinions. I have different opinions. You might have different opinions for me. And then we can tweak JavaScript and make things uh, the way we want. But the framework like Svelte and framework like Angular, they don't give you that much freedom. But... I think in the long run, you need, you don't need that much freedom to build things. What you need is you want to learn something, how to do it, and then execute it. You want to learn something and then execute it. You don't want to waste your time just learning new things every few months. I think that slows us down. And this is the major issue with React where they just release something new every six, or six months or year, and then you need to do you need to redo a lot of things. And I think they similarly, they, they do this with Next.js as well. Uh, for me, having freedom is good, but having too much freedom, I think it's it's make you less efficient in, in some areas. But that's my opinion. Like I'm not forcing you, maybe you want to have, you want to do a single thing in many different ways. That's what you want to do. But for me, I don't want to, do or I don't want to learn 10 different libraries to complete one task. That's just not efficient enough. Uh, because see, my relation with code or learning to code is is kind of based of two things. First, like I want to create a product. And second, I want to enjoy making the product. Now, we need to keep balance in that. If let's say I'm enjoying making the product, but I'm not successfully creating that product. So this weighs up and this weighs down, but I don't, at the end of the day, I don't have the product. But at the, at the other spectrum, I have the product, but I didn't enjoy making that product. So you need to keep those things in balance. For me, I think frameworks like SvelteKit uh, has huge potential. Uh, if you are a new developer, you, you don't need to learn those million hooks to create a basic application. So that's superpower. I don't know how React is going to change or will they ever change. Uh, I'm not too sure or if, even if they want to change. But for me, I want some flexibility and some direction. 
so that I don't waste my time wandering to doing different things and at the end of the day sacrificing my project. So yeah, if you have time, don't start with React. Give other frameworks some time or, or even give vanilla JS or jQuery some time. Play with it so that you can understand why at the end of end of the day we need new frameworks. Yeah, I think that was good discussion and uh i i hope i made things clear for you uh i know these things these things these things are not super easy to figure out if you are a developer who's just starting i know it, it is pretty confusing and you need some kind of direction so just to conclude the video if you are a new developer and you want a job asap start with react if you are not a new developer you have some time don't start with react maybe start with Svelte. And that's all from this discussion. Uh, I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.